Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And in this video, we are doing the full review on the Kubi Vagrant. Designed by Max Kachuk. Blade Steel is an OS 10 with a titanium frame lock handle. Let's get into it. So first off, I just want to say... Kubi has a whole bunch of amazing knives ranging from all different price groups and different styles for different people. So go check out some Kubi knives. I'm sure you can find one that is your style. This one is a medium size. It's about 7.1 inches with a 2.9 inch blade. But even with a 2.9 inch blade, I can get a full grip on this titanium handle. So I can definitely get a lot of leverage behind my cuts. But first, before we get into cutting, let's talk about sharpening. So I did sharpen this knife up on my Veneve Diamond Stones. Now, I use the Veneve Diamond Stones because I knew I wanted to take this edge to a mirror. And let's look at that edge really quick. The edge came out beautiful. And we'll talk more about that in just one second. Let's get to the sharpening. So, when sharpening, I, you know, with the OS 10, I wanted to see how it did at a really fine level bringing it up to a mirror grit not all steels do good with a mirror edge so i started sharpening it and got the edge i wanted the angle i wanted and had zero problems sharpening it they have a great sharpening twill and it's a great blade shape to sharpen as well so Going through my stones, I started getting upwards towards the more polishing grit, the, the stone that I knew would start polishing it, and it seemed like it was going to work out great. And it was holding its bite, the bite at the edge was still there, so I kept going. And OS 10, you know, there's um, arguments on if it's like a vg10 or if it's more like a 154 cm um, i'm pretty sure it has edge retention a lot like 154 cm possibly a little bit better but you can't relate it to os 8 it's definitely a lot better than os 8 um it has a the stain resistance of uh, you know kind of like a vg10 it's very stain resistant and it's very easy to sharpen so for the edge retention you get from it, it's pretty easy to sharpen. So after getting to a polished edge, sh sharpened up great. I stropped it, stropped up great. Um, and we'll see a little bit of testing on some paper, cut some paper. Took a very, very nice edge. I was very impressed with the edge that this OS 10 came with. It was easy to sharpen, easy to get a mirror on, and it kept a good bite. Now let's talk about taking this thing apart. So I did take it apart. I did have a little trouble taking it apart. It wasn't a big deal. It came apart and it went back to went back together great. The problem was it does not have a D-shaped pivot. So it has a free spinning pivot. So in order for me to get the pivot screw out, I had to put tension on the blade while it was open in order for it to unscrew it did unscrew just fine when i did that but it is a thing i wish it did have a d-shaped pivot or at least a bit on the other side so that i could put to a screwdriver on each side the parts all fit together very nicely i was very impressed with the way the parts fit together but there, there was a little bit of tight lock lock tight on one of the screws and you know it was a little troublesome to get out and we'll get more into that here in just a minute but let's look at it all taken apart and you can see they use they they milled out the scales very nicely to bring the weight down it does have a great weight and in my opinion it has a great weight at 3.6 ounces which isn't bad for a titanium frame lock of this size and you can see that uh, they have ceramic caged bearings and they use a steel washer to separate from the titanium scales so that's going to make it last a lot longer without um 
you know, making a track on the titanium. It makes it smoother. And after getting it all back together, it worked out great. I did have a little trouble centering it. Not real trouble or anything like that. It wound up working out good. But off the bat, it wasn't 100% centered. So I wanted to get it as close to centered as possible. It was a little bit off when I opened it up. When I opened it up, it wasn't perfectly centered, but the action was great. And after getting it back together, the action only got better. So let's check out the action. After putting it all back together, this action is amazing. Fantastic action. The detent is nice and crisp. You have plenty of access to this hole. It does have a chamfer around the edge of the hole. And you can thumb flick it very easily. Let's talk about the detent. So when you do reverse flick it, which is very easy to do with this, you can do it with the skin of your finger or with your nail. Either way works. Then when you unlock it, the access to the lock bar is very nice because they brought this a little bit farther back than right here, but they put a little chamfer right there, which makes it very easy to access. And then the detent, when you unlock, it's nice and early. I like to see that because that way when I do unlock it, it's going to be past the detent ball. Now it does not have a detent ramp when you unlock it, but it's still very easy to push past. You can also just do it with your finger. You can let this part, it doesn't have a flipper tab, so you can let this part basically hit your finger and it's very smooth on the drop. Extremely, extremely smooth. I did use KPL lubrication. Now you'll see it's almost perfectly centered. It's very, very little off, but not by much. I'm still happy with it. It's rock solid. No, no play either direction. Very, very nice. The tension from the lock bar is also very nice. It's not overly strong, but it's not overly weak. It's exactly the way you want to see it. The slow roll is very nice. You can hear it lock up, which is nice to hear. I want to hear my knives lock up. It makes me know that they are rock solid. Or lets me know that they are locked up. The clip works good in and out of the pocket, and it also sits very deep in the pocket. Good ramp, decent enough ramp. Um, if you have really thick pants, it might not be the best ramp. So depending on the thickness of your pocket, I didn't have any issues with my pants pocket, but it could have a little bit better ramp going in. It holds really deep though for it being a titanium milled clip. It holds very deep though, feels nice in the hand and yeah, very comfortable in the hand and works really good for, for holding in the pocket. Great retention, just a great, it's a good milled clip. Could be a tiny bit better, but it's definitely decent. Let's talk about cutting. So cutting with this knife, it cuts okay, cuts pretty good. It could have a little bit better cutting performance, but the reason why it winds up cutting good is um, because the ergos. It gives you a great thickness and depth right here for this size of blade. The handle and blade make sense together. So I can get a full tight grip. The jimping works great. It's a little farther back. I would like to see it a little bit farther up, but it works still really good because the back of my thumb still hits it, so I'm still locked in. And you have the pressure from the good ergos and good grip to put it through material. So it cuts pretty good goes through materials and it works for basic PC. It's not going to be your ultimate slicer. It's not going to be your recycling knife. It's not, you know, it's not that type of knife, but for basic EDC, it cuts great and will work just fine for most tasks. The, the utility cuts, 
they work really good and even though this tip isn't a very uh fine tip it's more of a stronger tip it works good because this blade shape gives you lots of leverage towards a utility cut. So since you have so much leverage towards a utility cut because of the handle and the blade shape, it works really good for utility cuts. Now, if you look at this blade, you'll see it's got a little bit of a kind of like a bead blast. Um, you can see it. Now, with this steel, that's okay because this is a very rust-proof steel, so you're not going to have to worry about the bead blast picking up rust speckles or anything like that. With other steels, I would say that this would be a bad finish. You'd want more of a stone wash or a satin. This is okay on this blade. Sharpening choil works great for sharpening. No problems on sharpening. The blade stock thickness is... 120 thousandths blade stock thickness behind the edge thickness is 20 thousandths so i would have liked to have seen the geometry a little bit better and that's what i mean it's not going it doesn't have the best blade geometry but it's okay for this package they didn't put a crazy thick blade stock the blade stock thickness is you know right in the medium um area so it's not too thick not very thin either they could have made it a little thinner. It would have cut better in that case, but it's fine. For basic EDC, it's just fine. The scales, well finished. It has a titanium pivot with steel hardware or steel screws. The, the clip and the backspacer are also titanium. Now, Let's get into some bad things. So there are a couple bad things here, and then we'll get back to some more good things. So the pivot is titanium, which is cool, T8, but they use T6s back here. I, I wish they would have just used T8. Kubi has been pretty good with using T8 hardware. I do not know why they went down and used T6s here. Um, one, I did have a little trouble with one of them with Loctite. And it wasn't easy to get out. I almost stripped one of my bits. So I would like to see T8s. I would have not have had that issue if for T8s. I don't mind the Loctite. The Loctite's fine. But use T8 hardware. It makes it easier. Then we don't have to worry about those issues. Now, another thing is... I do wish, like I said, the geometry was a little bit thinner. It would definitely increase the cutting performance. But, and then also you see here with how, how thick it gets, how quick it starts getting thicker. It'd be nicer to see that where you could get multiple sharpenings out of it before it started getting thicker. Now, another thing with some stuff right here in the back spacer and that was another reason why i wanted to take it apart i couldn't get to it without taking the knife apart and cleaning it out it was like some white stuff right there i don't know if it was some of the loctite that spread out or what it was from the factory but not that big of a deal there was that small issue with the centering it did not come centered it was a little off and you know, I did have to play around with it to get it centered, um, and it's still not perfectly centered. I can get it perfectly centered, but then the action isn't quite as good. But I can also um, make it even better if I want, and it's still locked up solid. So, you know, in all reality, these are very little nitpicks. Another bad thing, when I took it apart, it does not have a D-shaped pivot it is a free spinning pivot so you know it's you have to hold the the blade and put tension on it to get it out so that's just another thing this knife ranges between 85 and 100 dollars then they also have a 50 dollar version with g10 handles so great great buy the action's amazing on this thing the the stop pin is nice and big it adds to the str strength of it it's nice and strong i love that they're using the washers right here 
Um, the, the build and fit and finish is amazing. All the parts are really tight. Um, I do like this knife a lot. Fits in my hand really good. Um, great blade shape. Love the blade shape. There are so many great things. The chamfers around here are very comfortable in the hand. The access to the lock bar is decent. I mean, just there's so many things that are done very, very well on this knife for this price point. This price point for this knife is fantastic. Amazing, amazing buy here. I definitely can recommend this knife. It's, it's a great, great knife. And it works great for EDC, especially if you like the reverse flicking action. Now, there is one other little thing, and this isn't too big of a deal, but the chamfer around this hole... It's angled a little bit too much, in my opinion, which makes it to where, you know, if the detail was any stronger, it would be slippery. Luckily, they have the detent so well tuned, on my example, that it's okay. But they, if they would have done this chamfer nice and straight, or where it's a little chamfer. You want these chamfers to be small. You don't want them to be big. It makes them slippery if they're if they're big. You want them nice and a small chamfer. That way it actually bites your finger. You want them to be relatively sharp. Not very sharp, but relatively sharp. And this is knocked down a lot. It's very, very soft. But it winds up working out just fine in this example. Um, the jimping is very sharp. It really locks you in. You can take advantage of this a little bit if you want to, this little front choil. But, you know, more or less you're going to hold it like this, like this, or like this, in my opinion, which is three fingers holding on right there. Blade to handle ratio is okay. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. They do have the lanyard back here if you want to use a lanyard. And it's pretty much out of the way i mean if the lanyard came out right there i don't see it really causing an issue in my hand i mean i don't know i don't use lanyards but possibly either way great knife great buy let's do some quick size comparisons and then we'll wrap this up here's the qsp penguin good size comparison uh, the the kubi is a slight bit longer Here is the Ferrum Forge Prolix, which is a little bit shorter as well. You can see the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio is a little bit shorter. This is the giveaway knife for this month's patron. So if you want a chance to win this, you can become a patron. You better hurry up though, because we are we do monthly giveaways, and that one's going to be given away very, very soon. Benchmade Bug Out. A little tiny bit longer. They're pretty much in the same size group, but uh, the Kubi's a little tiny bit shorter. And we will do one or two more. The new Civivi Badlands. Great size comparison. The Badlands is a little bit longer than the new Civivi Pintail, which is... Almost the same size. Pintail is just a little bit shorter. And then another Kubi knife. The Kubi Anteater. Which is a bit bigger than the Vagrant. But another awesome buy from Kubi. If you are into Hawkbill blades. Very solid knife. And the CJRB Mini Feldspar. This is the small Feldspar. They are basically the exact same length. So if you know the size of this knife, you know about the length of this one. Now, to wrap this up, great knife. Great, great knife. I think they did a good job on it. I think Kubi's doing great work for at a great price point. So if you're looking to get good quality in titanium or G10... Uh, Kubi's definitely a brand to keep your eye on. They, we've been following them for a long time. We've had many, many, many of their knives on this channel, and they always seem to impress. Peace.